So now Brian says a small change, we need the big bucks. What did you have to do to qualify for that $21 million contract? Because I think that what I want, there's 74 people watching. What I want people to understand is while everyone claims that they want the big money, uh, you may not be eligible or what they call procurement ready to qualify for that. Chris, what did you have to submit and what did that look like to be able to submit for a $21 million contract? I, to me, it felt like uh, you ever seen the you ever seen the Indiana Jones Temple of Doom. <laughs> I have, yeah. <laughs> you know, you like the first scene where he's like running through like burning rings of fire and like falling, running up like falling staircases and like there's like bull. That's what it felt like. I mean, it was it was a uh, fifty page technical um, and then like a twenty page um, pricing bid that I ended up having to write. And then that wasn't, I've never even done that before. It was my first one. Um, and it was each, each individual question was um, pretty, pretty difficult. Like I was working pretty much 24 seven on it for the entire time that, that uh, we were doing the bid. Um, and then a range of qualifications, like the amount of time in business, experience for each individual team member i had to show them that we were seven or eight contacts deep so that we could you know handle the type of stuff they were going to throw at us like they don't want just anyone coming in to do this contract they wanted somebody who had experience and the ability to to handle it um so yeah i mean there was a there was a laundry list of qualifications so we had to jump through and what about the pricing what did that look like when you put together the pricing proposal for that it was like Kind of paper, trying to take some sort of like um, combination of current market forces and then like project it to the future a couple of years, um, add some padding. Like Eric, you kind of um, talked me through some of the pricing and actually asked, like, advised me to increase my pricing so that I could, uh, the qualification was that so I could sleep at night. Um, which I did, and thank God I did, um, because that kind of helped pr help protect me now. Right. Um, so now, but didn't they have other items on there for you to price, like planes and freight, other things besides just freight, like yes, planes, trucks? Yep. So there was like the one main thing was uh, fifty three foot fifty three foot dry vans. Uh, okay. Then they also they also and that was uh, domestic fifty three foot dry vans responding to specific cities within a certain amount of time, like a number of minutes, like 120 minutes. Um, so there's a lot of complex factors. That was the main one. And then we, they also had us do, uh, we responded to um, specific like events. So like, what would you do in the event of this terrorist attack, you know, on this city, like walk us through, every literally every minute of your response for you know two weeks you know and obviously like it stretches out the further you go but so yeah that was that was air charter like chart can you charter planes um can you charter planes internationally can you uh, charter planes yeah charter planes yeah right so i want just so for everyone to know when the government buys at that level right at that size they're not just buying trucks so when you say you want these bigger contracts, they put everything into it. I saw it. That's why I know Chris didn't, he glanced over that, but they needed chartered planes, terrorist attacks, response time for that. So what I want people to understand is while uh, we think that we want this stuff, we have to be able to service it and, and manage it. And we'll, we'll talk about that later on. What else did they ask for Chris? Um, a range of different equipment domestically, um, besides dry vans, reefers, RGNs, straight trucks, sprinters. Basically, they they wanted to have access to every piece of equipment that's out there in the in the logistics space domestically. Uh, internationally, the scope was a little bit smaller, but um, there was also like an insurance qualification because it's a lot of money. They're handling, and then it's also like a hazmat hazmat qualifications. Um, so different, just a, like a range of different services and providers that you had to have for that. And then it also, once we got into the contract, um, it's now expanding 
Mm. We're doing like very little of what we started out <laughs> contracted to do. Mostly we're doing change stuff. the rules on you. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, bring it on. Like this is this is great, you know. Um so so yeah, it's expanding a lot. It's like kind of moving sideways in directions that I didn't even expect, but and I forget the terminology for that, Eric, but you kind of coached me up in it, like when they can, you know, use a contract for right. Different, I yep. forget what it's called. Yeah, yep. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, the point I'm trying to make is that I, the reason why I brought these gentlemen on here is I want to what we, you know, my objective is to uh, show the opportunity that exists from like all the way at the bottom, which and then all the way up to the top. But there's opportunities for everyone in between. Uh, so again, if you're not ready for the $21 million contract, then micro purchase is very, I mean, that's a very attractive deal because one less is, and, go ahead, Dimitri. That's a, micro purchases is less competition. There's no, right. right. There's less competition who, you yeah. know, whether you're making that or not, there's less competition. They don't have to put it out publicly for bid. So once you build that relationship, they could call you back and back and back and over and over and over again. So you take, you're looking at only the one $10,000, but they can actually take a hundred thousand dollar contract, break it up into 10 pieces and give you 10 different contracts. That's what the kind of things that we talk about. Those are the kind of things that we, that we want people to understand. Um, then the next thing is they can go up to simplified acquisition, which is just one step above micro purchase. Uh, and those contracts are hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars as well. So those those are the, the the size that fits most people on this call. Uh, the most people are going to be watching this video. They're going to fall into that range where maybe they have one or two trucks, right, Demetrius, um, mm -hmm. or they have access to one or two trucks. And so those are the kind of things they can qualify for. And not a lot of people are going to be able to price out planes and fifty two Sprinter vans and whatever you know, showing up from a terrorist attack. I just don't see a whole lot of people on here having that those qualifications. But there is a pathway in both, in both directions. So uh, for the small opportunities, they, they're coming from building relationships and doing market research. And from the larger ones, uh, like Chris said, a lot of times they're miscategorized and misclassified. So you've got to be have someone constantly searching and doing the research. Um, mm -hmm. So I, want, I just want to say that because I want to help answer some of those questions. Uh, Go ahead, Demetrius. Keep keep talking. So now, Demetrius, one of the things I think, um, but you've won multiple opportunities. How many contracts have you won this year? Um, somewhere around seven, eight. Okay, seven, eight. Okay, all right. Yeah, a lot of them for it's been for distribution. Okay. Uh, we're still waiting to hear back on a lot of the ones that we bid on for the transportation projects. Uh, okay. We still don't know what the the holdup is. You know, it's like. You know, the fourth quarter, I thought I was going to get really, you know, hear some stuff back in, during the fourth quarter, but it didn't seem like it was a whole lot of activity like normal. Right. It normally is in the fourth quarter. So, um, now, okay. Oh, I want to say something because it, you guys just made me think of, uh, by the way, make sure if 74 people watching, make sure you all hit the like button, please. Uh, there's actually, so interesting enough, when we go back to building relationships, I don't know how Chris and Demetrius let me forget this. We have a student in our group right now that knows nothing about trucking, nothing about logistics, but because he had a relationship with uh, one of the departments during COVID, yeah. he's been sending water to the border and supplies to the border for the refugees. And so he's actually booking trucks to go down to the border. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, Mo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Mo. Yeah, so that relationship that he picked up during the pandemic, providing them with PPE stuff, uh, when it came, that person is a uh, is a, a disaster response person, contracting officer. So then, when the the Afghani refugee situation happened, they called him for that, and so he had to get trucks down to the border uh, from, I think one was from California and the other was from Florida. Yep. Yep, and had to go down to the border. So so again, mm -hmm. the relationships are super 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 critical. 